Hey people, welcome back to the series just about tuning the drum set. Today we will talk about the bass drum. So here we are again. Again, as with the other drums, we took the bass drum out of the drum set to have space and to work on just the bass drum and have no resonances of the other drums. We also put it upside down in a 90 degrees angle so we can work on it better. And also we have the head flat on here. When you work on the batter head, especially make sure that the legs of your bass drum are not extended too far because in that case when we apply pressure to the head you may damage the drum here when it rests on this leg but it, now it barely rests on the hoop. So that's a great place to start. So on this bass drum we have a Remo Power Stroke 3 with these two dots which is a pretty common head for a dry and short fat bass drum sound in rock or heavy metal but this is a little bit used so we will switch it out and swap it for a new Remo Power Stroke 3. So for this of course we take off the head. Uh, again I use these two tuning keys with the weights. Uh, if you tap them the right way with this you can be much faster than any cordless screwdriver. So we go, go all the way around and loosen all the screws to take off the hoop and the head. We take out the dot so we won't forget it and it will end up inside the drum. We put on the head, again apply a little bit of pressure in the middle so it will be centered. And then we put on the hoop again. Again thread in the screws with your fingers and first or use the tuning key and tap it again to lower the screws. With most drums these clamps are not fixed so make sure that they are exactly vertical above the tuning lugs so the pressure we apply will be exactly straight. I only tighten the screws as far as they start to grip and start to lower the head and then I loosen them again a little bit. So we want the screws to rattle just a little bit. Then again I apply pressure in the middle of the head and also I often rattle a little bit on the hoop to make sure that it falls in a natural position and a neutral position. Because that's always where we want to start, at a neutral position. To keep it neutral we try to get the same tension on all the tuning screws and we start by finger tightening it. So we actually grip the screws with our in index finger and thumb and increase the tension as far as we can. Again, I don't go around the drum, but I turn the drum to have my hands and arms in a neutral position all the time, so I'm always applying the same amount of tension. Of course, we have to go at least two rounds, because if you increase the tension of some screws, the tension of the other screws will decrease, and then you can increase a little bit more here. Again, the head will absorb a lot of power and thus stretch through playing. So let's stretch it now so it won't detune later on. So I always say give CPR to your drum. This stretches and centers your head. If you are very impatient, you can do the extreme version of stretching the drum head. Keep in mind that a cylinder can hold a lot of weight if it's applied exactly vertical. So what we do is this. Clean or take off your shoes and get on with it. I mean, get on it. Don't worry, the head and the drum can easily hold your weight. But still, I wouldn't do it too often. But now we can be pretty sure that we have stretched the drum head enough so it will later on hold the tuning. We have now made all the screws finger tight and we're done. Actually, this is enough tension in most cases if you play rock, pop, heavy metal, you want a short and dry sound and for this just finger tightening the screws can be enough. If the tone, the pitch is too low for your taste, you can of course increase it a little bit. I will show you this later on in the set. But before that let me tell you a little bit about this dot. 
It serves two functions. The first one is that you hear a little bit more attack if you place it exactly where your beta head strikes the head. By the way, you can also achieve this by, for example, taping an old credit card exactly where the beta strikes the head. Some drummers even tape metal plates on there. And the second function is that it protects the head. It won't crack as fast. This is the perfect spot to give you another great tip. If, nevertheless, your head cracks, there is a quick solution. If you have a backstage pass, just tape it on there as a band-aid. So cover the crack with anything that's laminated and add a ton of duct tape to it. It won't sound great, but it will sound good enough to finish a show. I actually did this once and it sounded good enough and held well enough that I played two shows with this before I switched out the heads. Now we look at the Rezo head. As it is pretty common, I have a Rezo head with a hole for the microphone in it. We will talk about the advantages and disadvantages of these kinds of heads later. Now let's at first tighten this one. We do the same thing like with a batter head. We center it and make all the screws finger tight. Of course, on this head I won't apply much pressure as the hole might cause it to rip. But as we won't play it and won't tune it very high, we don't have to stretch it that much. The hole also makes it almost impossible to tune it with the first method I showed you with the toms to tune it by ear and compare the pitches of the different tuning screws. Now we have just finger tightened both heads. Let's look at how the bass drum sounds right now. For my personal taste, this is just a little bit too dry, a little bit too low, so I start by adding a little bit of tension on the rezzo head. Now it sounds like this. For many drummers in rock and pop, as well as for many sound engineers, this may already be sufficient. I mean, the bass drum is also called the kick drum. Not just because we kick it, but also because many people only want the kick, meaning the attack of the bass drum. But I personally like my bass drum to have a little bit of tone, a little bit of sustain, so I will now add a little bit of pressure on the batter head. So from the point where the screws start to grip, I start by adding just a quarter turn on each screw. And now it sounds like this. Still a little bit too low for me, so I increase the tension even more. Now we start to hear a little bit of sustain. If you listen carefully, you can hear that the rezzo head is just a tiny bit lower than the batter head. And usually in rock and pop, just like with the toms, we like to play the bass drum rezzo head a little bit higher than the batter head. Now it sounds a lot more focused and a little bit more alert. Now it almost has just a little bit of sustain. I like that a lot. Another benefit of having just a little bit more tension on the heads is that the tension itself will make the screws last longer. So they won't detune as quickly as more tension on the tuning screw will hold it in place longer. Now let's see how it sounds if we add just a little bit more tension. Still pretty dry, but a little higher. 
Let's quickly put it back into the drum set and see how it sounds. And just a quick word on muffling. As I said before, this bass drum is not yet muffled in any way. And there are a few different options you have if you want to use some muffling in there. I don't like to push a, a pillow in the bass drum because I want to achieve a good sound just by tuning. I just put uh, this bed sheet in there and it doesn't even touch the drum heads. It's just, it just lies in the, inside the bass drum just uh, for um, just to catch a little bit of this basketball sound, this poing poing. Um, by the way, if you hear this, you have a good drum because this only occurs if your shell is perfectly round. So this may be a, an annoying overtone, but it's a good sign. So I just put this like this, just on the ground in the bass drum. It maybe it touches the heads just a little bit to keep it in place, but it's just it just lies in there on the bottom of the shell and there's another trick you can use you can uh, pick your favorite towel and roll it up and maybe you can tape it like this and you put it right here but inside the drum of course and you can also tape it down or use velcro tape if you want to um, what this does is it kills most of the overtones because they all um, usually occur at the edge of the drum head. Um, so this is also a method which is um, pretty popular. And of course, if your, your sound engineer or your bandmates tell you that it's too resonant, of course you can just put a thick blanket or a pillow in there. But as I said before, I like to achieve a good sound not through muffling because usually you can achieve a great sound without resorting to this kind of thing. But as I said, I want to use a little bit of muffling. So again, I put this bed sheet, this folded bed sheet in the bass drum. I use the microphone hole and gently squeeze it in there. Place it on the bottom of the shell, make sure it doesn't touch the heads too much. And that's usually all I use. Usually it's even less than this. But one very important reason to use a little bit of muffling is you can place uh, a microphone in there because usually you get an inside mic and an outside mic of the bass drum and usually the inside mic is placed on the bottom of the shell so it doesn't rattle. It's a good idea to have a little bit of dampening in there. And there are also some special uh, dampening materials that are especially designed to rest in the bass drum and even hold a microphone like for example the kicker but uh, many companies offer some special dampening materials for bass drums. problems which sometimes arise uh, when you play the bass drum. The first is that the dampening inside the bass drum might shift or move when you play and the second is that the whole bass drum might move when you play, especially when you play louder or on a um, slick uh, ground like this. And there is um, an advice I got which has another benefit. We will put this brick stone inside the bass drum. Why? Because at first 
it makes the whole bass drum heavier so it won't move when you play. It will hold the dampening in place and also I've heard that it might benefit the sound. How? Let's just have a look at it. This Rezo head is just finger tight. I will demonstrate it for you, then I will put the stone in it because it won't fit in here. And I will again put the same head on, again finger tight, so we have the exact same pressure on here and can then compare the two sounds. Of course we have to make sure to put the stone on all of the dampening and enough of the dampening material to not harm the material of the shell. Up until now we used a Rezo head with a hole in it. This of course had a lot of, has a lot of advantages, but now let's try it out with a closed Rezo head. By the way, those clamps here are usually loose, but if you don't want to lose them and the screws are pretty loose in there, you just do this, you just put it flat on the ground and you won't lose anything. So the um, advantages of a Rezo head with the hole in it. Of course, it's usually for the microphone. A, a bass drum is pretty uh, easy to mic with, uh, with a microphone inside because of course then it's isolated from all the other instruments and sound engineers prefer this. And um, that's what the, hole, what the hole is usually for but also you have the advantage that you can reach in there and change the dampening if you want to or even pull the dampening out completely. Also because the air moves out of the bass drum you don't have unusual rebound or flutter, beater flutter um, because the sustain is usually very short and uh, you have less resonance. Also. This short and dry sound is often what you're looking for if you play heavy metal, pop or rock music. So this hole helps you in achieving a dry, short and fat bass drum sound. Also if you like to bury the beater in the batter head, you won't have kind of a press roll. If you have a closed rezo head, you have much more resonance and then you, uh, if you press the beater into the head, you will have kind of a press roll with your bass drum. But with the closed head, on the other hand, you of course also have some advantages. First of all, of course you have much more sustain because the air doesn't move out and the heads are vibrating, vibrating longer. This also means that you can uh, play with these resonances. So you can use a short sound by burying the beater or a long sound, by, long sound by playing out of the drum set. I will demonstrate that later. Also, you have at least perceived much more bass frequencies, especially if you play acoustically in a room like this. You have to try it out. This is sounding very dry in here, but you have a lot of bass with this uh, closed head. I like to play with a closed uh, bass drum head because I like a warm, full and sustainy uh, bass drum sound. And also I enjoy the rebound because you get much more rebound out of the closed head and I like to play out of the drum, uh, out, of, out of the bass drum. We use um, Power Stroke 3 with this fiber skin, this, um, this calf skin, this fake calf skin head and um, this is a pre-dampened head, you have this uh, dampening ring in here. I use this because when you play a closed bass drum you can't reach into to change the dampening so I but I still want to control the sound a little bit, so I use a pre-dampened Rezo head, which will control the overtones and will give me a full and warm sound, but not too long of a ring. 
Again, as with the other heads we put on this bass drum, we start by finger tightening the head. Again, as I showed you with the toms, I turn the screws and in the same motion I turn the drum so I immediately reach the next two screws. If you do this, make sure that your bass drum is seated on a soft floor so you won't uh, damage either the drum hardware or the floor. Also, again, we put pressure in the middle of the head so we stretch it and center the head. When the head is finger tight, we add more tension with the drum key. Again, I use two drum keys, it just makes it a little bit more convenient. And we can also use the method with the wrinkles I showed you with the tom. So press in the middle of the head and wherever you see wrinkles, which is pretty easy with this shiny head, you uh, increase the tension until the wrinkles disappear. So we finger tightened the head and then added a couple of turns with a drum key and this is what the head sounds like now. Keep in mind it's a pre-dampened head. But still there is some sustain in there and this will increase even more with the front head tuned, being tuned a little bit higher. This of course has the disadvantage you can't reach through it and change the dampening, the positioning of the dampening inside it. We will take the dampening out completely, but still I want to show you how to change the hoop if you don't have the chance to put the bass drum flat on the ground because maybe you have the tom-toms on here or the whole bass drum is surrounded by uh, mic stands or something like that. We just loosen the lower screws first and work our way up so the top screws can hold the hoop in place until we loosen them as well and take off the hoop. If we put the head on again, of course we start at the top so the top screws can hold the hoop in place and then we add all the other screws and then maybe push the hoop a little bit upwards because of course gravity will pull it down and then we proceed to make them equally tight again. Now we use an Adoro single ply coated as a batter head. As you can see this has been used before but it's still in pretty good shape so we can use it again. By now you know how we start. We finger tighten the head and in between steps we also stretch it. We can use all three basic methods I showed you with the toms, also with the bass drum, like the wrinkle method for example, or the one where we lean on the hoop right next to the screw and increase the tension with our fingers as far as we can. As you can see I go in a circle and not in a star-like pattern. The reason for that is very simple. Bass drum heads are built to absorb a lot of power. They are very robust, so we don't have to be as careful with them as, for example, with a snare drum rezzo head. As we have a single ply head and want to tune the bass drum a little bit higher this time, we can use the pitch method, where we listen to each tuning screw and compare the pitches and adjust the lowest ones upwards at first. The first thing I do is go around the whole drum and look for the biggest outliers to correct them at first. You probably know the feeling that you can't even decide which one is higher or which one is lower. I can tell you that this one is higher than this one. 
But what if I told you that it's actually the other way around? Can you hear it? That's because the most dominant pitch of a drum is very hard to hear through all the overtones we get. So the most important tip I can give you is again sing or hum the most dominant pitch you can hear to yourself and then compare the two sounds you make. When you sing them aloud and make the tone yourself it's much easier to decide which one is higher and which one is lower. Even just trying to mimic the most dominant pitch might help you in hearing which one is higher or lower. And above that it's just plain practice. Now I stretch it again. Sounds way lower now, so we have to readjust for that. Every time we stretch it, the differences get smaller and smaller. So now we have stretched it enough. Now we get it in tune again. This whole process is pretty lengthy, but it assures that the drum will stay in tune later on. Now the head is pretty much in tune. Now let's hear how the drum sounds in the context of the whole drum set in this room. With the closed rezzo head and the high tuning we have to watch how we play the pedal because if you're used to playing into the drum head which is totally okay if you play rock or metal with a heavy with a thick um, batter head then you will um, dampen the tone of the higher pitched batter head now so I think you should also ha have this in your tool case anyway. You should learn to play out of the bass drum. So don't bury the beater, but let the rebound, the natural rebound of the beater happen. And you can also use both techniques deliberately. You play into the head if you want a higher and shorter sound. It's higher because of course you put pressure on the head. And if you want a longer and warmer, deeper sound, you play out of the bass drum. Let me show you. seen that there are many factors influencing the sound of your drum, not just the drum heads and the way of tuning them, also your way of playing, the sticks you choose, the hoops and the dampening. 
But with the bass drum we tend to forget the beater head and the material of the beater. You don't have to live with the beaters that came with your pedal. You can change it. If you play more heavy and loud stuff you maybe want a more heavier, thicker and more solid beater. And if you play softer music you maybe want a more soft beater. Let me just show you one little device. It's called the Ahead Switch Kick. All you do is you just swap out your beater for this rod and then you can put different beater heads on there just like this. Just like this. <laughs> and you can swap and switch between different beaters quickly. If you play a heavy song after a soft song you just do this and if it's really heavy you can turn it around and have the plastic side and if you want to you can even play your bass drum with a brush. Now we'll show you how this impacts the sound of our bass drum and we again use uh, the closed front head, pre-dampened front head and the single ply batter head, pretty high tuning and no dampening inside. With the bass drum we have to be especially careful because it's the only drum that's tilted at a 90 degree angle. So it projects completely different from all the other drums. So what you hear right here where you sit is completely different from what the audience is hearing. So with the bass drum and especially in a very challenging room like this, it's very important that you let someone else play the bass drum for a while and you move through the room and you hear how the bass drum sounds in the different areas of your location. So you know a little better how to tune the bass drum for the room and how or if and how you want to dampen the bass drum and especially of course how you want to play the bass drum because that's, just, that's in the end the most important part. So I want to show you how big of a different difference it is. The camera with a microphone on it will move from behind the drum set all the way around so uh, it will stand in the back of the room and you will hear the differences as I play the same roof, same volume all the time. This of course only applies if you play the bass drum acoustically and you're not amplified. If I use microphones it's a whole nother story. Then I usually see it as a cooperation between me and the sound engineer and together our goal is to find the perfect bass drum sound and that's usually not the perfect sound in this position. 
You have to keep in mind that usually a bass drum is mic'd with at least one microphone inside it and you can never hear how what you're hearing right here at this position corresponds to what you hear in the control room. So when you're making a recording, frequently listen in the control room how the bass drum sounds through the microphones and then you can gradually uh, get closer to your desired sound. And that might be the exact opposite of what it sounds like right here. And live, of course, I chat with the sound engineer and together we find the best solution for the room and for the microphones and the tuning of the bass drum. So you have to choose your methods according to the position you're in. Every situation calls for different methods to use. Now you have a few tools available to find your perfect bass drum sound and always keep in mind that it's not here. Except if you use your drum kit only in your rehearsal room, then of course this should be where the perfect bass drum sound is. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video helped you in achieving your dream bass drum sound. If you like this video, please subscribe. There are new videos every week. And also check out the other parts of my series on drum tuning and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.